Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> First Chronicles 16, how many of them moving tonight? <laughs> Verse 1. So they brought the ark of God, which represents the power and the presence of God. The word was in there, and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offers before God. Oh, aren't you so glad that we don't have to be cutting on no lambs and offering sacrifices and taking the entrails and throwing them out and burning them and all this stuff now? That Jesus took it on the cross. Amen. Before they could have enter into the presence of the living God back then, they had to offer all this sacrifice. They had to have the incense not only to go up as a sweet savor, but to kill the smell from the death in there. Can you imagine? Because sin brings death. Sometimes we tread upon the grace of God because we don't realize how gruesome it is that sin brings death. And that cutting that lamb let them know this is what sin does. Every time they had to offer a sacrifice, this is what sin does. We don't have to do that no more, so sometimes we become complacent and we go off into it anyway. It's no big deal. I can repent tomorrow. I can repent tonight. I can get before the Lord. Man, we tread upon grace sometimes. We ought to feel convicted over that stuff. Mm -hmm. Many people get uh, all uppity about a tradition about Halloween. Go into the devil's den. Go into that demonic sin. And it makes no big difference. I'm under grace. Mm -hmm. You don't realize sin brings death. death. They had to gut that lamb and pull the entrails out. Eat the whole lamb of God and burn the entrails. That's what they had to do. Now we come into the presence of God by what Jesus did. We shouldn't tread upon that. We should believe in our hearts and see what Jesus did. Have you ever watched the Passion? Wrapping that up about a thousand times and then you may get close to what Jesus really did at the cross. And here we just do any old way. Live any old way. No. No, it brings death. And they had to see and smell the smell of death and taste the taste of death every single time that they did a sacrifice. That'll make you think, people. We need this kind of preaching. Amen. Because the Word of God is testifying to this. And you know it says in Ezekiel that the temple will be rebuilt even in the millennial reign. And many theologians believe they'll bring all this back in. And I thought, why would you bring that back in? Because Jesus has already paid the price. But that may be one reason to bring that back in. So those who are unsaved can see exactly what sin does. It brings death. Because the treading upon the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are supposed to have the education and the wisdom and the knowledge with our glorified bodies after we're raptured to go out and help minister to those people that are still on the earth in the millennial reign and show them what this is pointing to. This points to what Jesus, who's sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, paid for. Amen. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Woo! Thank you. Breathe, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Verse 2. And when David had made an end of the offering, the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of fish and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. There's your Thanksgiving dinner. There's your Thanksgiving feast. There wasn't no turkey gobble gobble, but there was a fish. <laughs> Hello. Woo. <laughs> there was some flesh. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lamb. I'm thinking of Jesus on the beach with the fish just kicking out. It was the lamb. Praise God. But that was Thanksgiving. <clears throat> you see, they were thanking the Lord as they were eating. That was Thanksgiving. See, Thanksgiving started way before that. That's why we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Go to verse 7. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brother. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto Him. Sing songs unto Him. Talk ye of all His wondrous works. Now that's twice He tells us to make known the deeds and to proclaim His wondrous works. Do you know if you've got a proper relationship with the Lord Jesus through what Christ did at the cross, by faith, even though your life is not perfect like you think it should be or those around you think it should be, hello, hello. Amen. How those around you think, well, your life just ain't that good. Yeah, but my faith is in Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. And he's cleaning me up. If you've got that type of faith, guess what's going to follow you? There's going to be wondrous works follow you. Amen. And then when those wondrous works follow you, like what happened in the nursing home, you need to proclaim it. They won't be out of pride. It's going to be because you know the spiritual precepts of God. Amen. You proclaim his marvelous deeds. And you tell what Jesus has done. You don't go in and say, well, Lord, he's praying for somebody and he raised up. No, Jesus touched them. Amen. Amen. Proclaim his marvelous works and what he paid yeah. for at the cross. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's when you start getting the power of God in your life for real. You become something else than just a pew sitter. You start going into your calling. Amen. Mm. David knew something here. Whew. Not only that, he said, sing unto him. You know that the Lord will also inspire you, even you that does not know anything about poetry, anything about poems, Anything about songs, he'll give that to you in your heart. Mm -hmm. You'll start rhyming things and going, praise God, this is coming out of me. You need to start writing it down as you're praying because you're praying unto the Lord. When mm -hmm. you have that joy flowing through you, it just starts flowing out of you because it's the Holy Spirit inspiration. Oh, yeah. Ooh, praise yeah. God. I remember wish we one day. Yeah, we I wouldn't even know my knees. I was just rejoicing in the Lord always. I was just thankful to be saved. It was the first month I come in, the honeymoon season. And I would say, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel good. Praise God. And all of a sudden, whoo, I'll praise you, Lord God, through thick and thin. For yours is a spirit that dwells within. Amen. I'll praise you, O oh Lord. These things just start flowing. Amen. Keep your mind open and your thoughts clear for when you listen in faith, the Lord is near. Those things start flowing. Because they come from the true Spirit of God and it builds your faith. Because you realize, I, I couldn't have done that. Hey, Jesus is real. This Holy Spirit inside me is real. And when your faith gets built like that, you'll go grab hold of anybody and pray. You ain't scared. You know Jesus is real and He's living inside you. Oh, Boom! It's up to the Lord the next step. It's His name on the line, not yours. When you realize that, you won't be scared to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then you can tell of His marvelous works and His deeds. Verse 10, Glory ye in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice who seek the Lord. Oh, do you see that, people? Let the heart of them rejoice who seek the Lord. I seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Sometimes we forget to do this right here. I'm telling you, we're tired and in the flesh sometimes when we come home and we want to turn on that that crazy box called a TV. And we want to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to relax a little bit. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to read the Word tonight, but I'm going to relax a little bit and watch. Do you really think watching the TV is relaxing? 